speak at all to what the command is that the user is trying to do, then sprinkle those in there and make it all the more um, accurate. You don't be surprised if users are very polite as well. Like if they say, for example, um, uh, search for this, or it, a user might go, could you please search for this? Or can you help me find? Or, yeah, or can you search for this, please? So then the can you and the please at the end, you know, becomes optional. Yeah. And, and you would think like, but why would someone do this? They're, you know what, if the personality of your app works right, you might be surprised. People might treat it with respect. Yeah. Um, do find a way to use a catch-all command. Remember that your command set has multiple commands. And I think that on the bottom of the list, one of your commands should catch everything yep. so that you can at least bring them into your app still, try to figure out what it is that they were saying, or just have a generic function, or even just land in your app. You know, I mean, if they got it all wrong and they just said gibberish, may as well welcome them in anyway and, and land inside your app. And you can show them even. Yeah, and I'm going to show that next. You can We're show gonna... them and say, like, listen, this is what I got from you. Oh, yeah. Here's the gibberish. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you expect me to do with this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and actually, I'm going to talk on that right now. We're going to talk about using, uh, and this is, uh, you can get PhDs in the subject of natural language processing. Right. But you can use natural language processing techniques to figure out exactly what it is that the user intended to do. So let's look at this handling function. If you think back to the last module that I did, is the MSDN app. They may have said, find whatever method I'm looking for. And so I may have known for sure that I'm supposed to be finding something. But if it didn't get translated that way, then it got handled by the second command, which is this natural language processing. And all it did was pass it into this function, this handle NLP function. And this handle NLP function is responsible now for taking just a raw phrase, whatever it is that they said, and turning it into some kind of meaning. Okay? So let's break this down and see how we should do this. I want you to notice before I start breaking these blocks apart that we essentially have one block, two blocks, and three blocks, okay? We've got the first, the second, and the third. So we're gonna start with the first one and we're gonna look at ladder logic. Ladder logic means that you do the most strict parsing things first. Mm -hmm. So if you can find in there that the user said, <coughs> go to something, then you know that your task is going to be to navigate somewhere, right? So that's very exact, very precise, very strict for us as the developer. So let's do that one first. Right. So in this case, if they said go to or go to or find or search or show me, then we're going to say, all right, the action is navigate. <clears throat> and we are going to navigate to this website. All right. So next, else if. The recommendation text, I should have told you this reco text variable that you're seeing here, this represents exactly what they said while we're in here, okay? Of course, yeah. Yeah. So the reco text, if it contains the word learn how to, then we know something about what the user's trying to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little index of, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to use a little index of to find the location of that learn how to, and obviously, the stuff after it is what they want to learn how to do, right? So we're going to grab that stuff after it, and we're going to search for it. And we're going to handle it just as if they had said, find whatever. All right? Next, I said, oh, I said next, we're going to have the most ambiguous. OK, we really don't know what you meant here. Yeah. So we're going to welcome you into the, act, into the app. The action is find. And we're just going to go ahead and search for what it is that you look for. So even if it's complete gibberish, you can type it into MSDN online. You can type it into this app, you know? Right. So we're going to go ahead and do a generic search for it. Now, remember that once the user is in your app, this is an opportunity for you to continue the conversation. So just like you said, you can show them on the screen what it was that they said. And then you can use the speech recognition um, strategies that Nick was telling you in Module 4. Yep, four. In Module 4, <clears throat> how to recognize now what, what they say while they're in your app and um, try to clarify what it is that they want to do and get them to that place. Yeah, it's important because I've noticed that sometimes people will use voice commands because that's one of the things that we've kind of like advertised a lot yeah. as part of Cortana. And voice commands will cover a lot of really advanced scenarios on how to launch the app and do something. 
But then what you find is some users, they try one thing, and then they like it so much or they, they find it useful, they want to do another command. <laughs> in there, and then what do they do? They basically press the search button again to use voice commands again. So it's kind of counterintuitive because you're kind of forcing the user to get out of the app so they can come back in and do a search. And if only you got a nickel for every time they launched your app, then that would be a good strategy. Yeah, but it's, it takes a lot of launches to get a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> so the bottom line is, it might be a little redundant sometimes, but try to pair up a good voice command strategy with an in-app speech recognition strategy so that maybe you can try to take as much input from the voice commands to then process most of it inside of the app so that once they're inside of the app, you can maybe ask them, would you like to search for something else? Yeah. And if they say yes, again, you can go yes, no. And then, oh, okay, what would you like to search for? And then they can provide their input, and then you feed them back into the same recognition engine that was used for the voice commands coming in. And therefore, you don't have to send the users back out of the app every time they want to use your feature. Yeah. Okay, let's look now at handling failures. Uh, mostly the same uh, in, as a lot of apps, but there are a few differences when you're dealing with the world of speech. Uh, when your app doesn't recognize anything, inform the user and give them a chance to try again. Because there's a good chance that, once again, they don't have their hands to work with. They don't want to jump out of the speech experience just because they goofed up or they didn't know what to say. So give them a chance to try again. Um, give a, I've said this a couple times. Do provide examples of expected phrases so that you're leading them down the right path. After a number of multiple failures, Offer another input option. Maybe speech isn't working. Maybe it's not appropriate in this scenario. And so maybe give them the chance to stay in the speech experience, but also give them a chance to, to kind of fall back to the touch experience. Um, if you can always allow the multiple input options and it makes sense for your app and it's intuitive, then that's great. And try to make corrections, but prompt the user to speak up if they're really quiet. So if, if you've got at least some confidence, like Nick was saying, if you've got at least medium confidence, maybe you can go ahead and act on it and just maybe express your uncertainty with what they said. But if you can use those error cases and tell that the user's not talking real loudly, and right. so it was a medium result, maybe you can say, uh, I think you said chicken, but I, you, you're not talking very loud, so maybe you could speak up a little bit. Yeah, and that degrading quality also yeah, event right. can also help you with this. Absolutely. Uh, the, the subject of testing is next. And once again, just like handling um, <clears throat> fail cases, errors, the subject of testing is mostly the same across software development. But in this case, there are a few differences with speech. Mostly, it's just that certain things in the area of testing are far more important with speech. Um, you do need to make sure that you test on real users in real scenarios and try to avoid bias and assist. Like try to avoid leading them down any paths when you're just testing it. Try to right. figure out what they would have done. Just like I say, record what it is that people want to say to their app, not what they learn that you're gonna let them say. Right. Test enough to determine what the most common phrases are. So you saw that Nick was providing a number of words that meant the same thing. And you can add some heuristics in your app because you know what it is that, they, that was detected, that what they said. And so you can determine what the patterns are. How often are people saying this versus this versus this? And remember I was telling you that if your grammars are smaller, then they're more performant? Well, if you've got 17 things in your grammar, and you find out that 14 of the things nobody ever says, right. you could remove those and right. improve the performance of your app. That's another thing is even after the app goes live, you can still gather data, of course, with the user's permission. Sure. So you can say like, especially in speech, it's really important that you be able to tell the user like, to, to help improve the quality of this app, would you mind, you know, would you agree to us grabbing what you say to the app and then sending it anonymously to our server so we can just analyze the strings of what you're saying. Maybe there's combinations that people are saying that we just never thought of. Yeah. So, but again, do not, stealth do this, it's always something that you should do, following privacy rules, asking the user's permission, allowing them to opt out, even if they've agreed before, and always say, always do what you say you will do. Yeah. And then make sure that you test in all of the <laughs> languages that you're supporting. So if you've got an alternate language, don't, don't right. neglect that language in your testing cycle, that's important. All right, let's look at some examples. First of all, I wanna show you guys some examples of some apps that have a good launch experience, <coughs> okay? So these app developers have done a good job of making it easy for me to get into the app by way of a statement. And I've got them all listed for you on the slide, but we're going to uh, whip through them as well. 
And I'm going to go ahead and go to the Cortana experience and show you my screen. And I'm going to say, Uber, get me a taxi. Now, one phrase that I've uttered, this app is starting, and it automatically knows that wherever I'm at right now, it wants, I want a taxi. And so it's going to go ahead and find me one, and bam. And it had some sort of an error there, probably having to do with, <laughs> probably having to do with the fact that um, I, I don't have good cell coverage in, inside right. the studio. But anyway, this app has taken me from zero, like from, I just turned the phone on, I haven't even unlocked it, to let's show you a screen where you're ready to set a pickup location and, and, and go. Right. That's awesome. How about Audible, play. There we go. My audiobook's playing. Playing the four loves. And Headed classics today. He was the novelist and children's writer. There we go. New worlds to test old truths. And he was the Christian And I'm going to need to Yeah, you have to There pause. we go. Background audio. Background audio. <laughs> yeah, we just talked about it. Exactly. Now it's a yeah. reality. <laughs> well, let's try this. Twitter, new tweet. Talking to developers on Microsoft Virtual Academy about Cortana. Talking to developers on Microsoft Virtual Academy about Cortana. Now, I could have put some hashtags in there, by the way. I just happened not to. But right. let me go ahead and send a tweet on that. If you guys want to go ahead and head over to twitter.com slash codefoster and we retweet that, we'll right. just see how many of you are, are and, tuning into this. And you can follow Jeremy at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Now, this one's fun. Um, I have a home automation system. And I can do, I can do this. I can say... Insteon, set the temperature to 72 degrees. Insteon, setting the temperature. There we go. And wow. so now my home is now okay. set to 72 setting degrees. Setting the temperature to 72 For Fahrenheit. There we go. And she knows that I, I prefer Fahrenheit because it's of where I live. Now, <laughs> uh, I, I specifically, it's let me just say. 72 Celsius would be pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> I, I did set the temperature just now to what it was already so that I don't weird my wife out. Because she's <laughs> at home right now. That'd be pretty strange. You're going to really mess with people. Yeah, that's way. right. Let's try this one. Wikipedia random article. Display an article. Yeah, talk about a risky yeah, talk demo. Talk about a risky demo. Let's try this. Oh, I'm not showing it on the screen. There we go. Let's, let's look at the screen. There we go. Muhammad Faisal Lankarani Hirad J. Faisal Hussein Fadhel Muhammad Fadhel Al Jamali Faisal. Yeah, she's doing an amazing job pronouncing those uh, names. But what just happened was Wikipedia pulled up a Wikipedia pulled up a random article and then started reading it. So this was using speech synthesis, right? Yes. Yes. Microsoft Zero Mobile. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's try this again using a little bit of a more natural phrase. Here goes. Wikipedia, show me a random article. I would probably actually say it that way. And actually, I didn't catch it. Wikipedia, show me a random article. Oh, that's right. That's exactly what I expected. That's exactly. What I'm trying to show. That's it command. doesn't recognize that more fuzzy logic. So this show me a is not optional. Exactly. It, and it, it, it wasn't expecting it, and it threw it, and it doesn't know how to recognize this command. So, so that's the kind of scenario you're trying to capture. Yeah. We'll have to tell Rudy. Check this one out. Remote desktop, connect to Azure VM. Connecting using remote desktop. Pretty impressive. Oh, that is cool. OK, so my remote desktop has started. And you know, if I remember to start that, yeah, there we go. I've got that VM on in the cloud. <laughs> Look at that. There's my taskbar. This is awesome. And that was initiated with a voice command. With one voice command, I'm, <clears throat> I'm uh, yeah, and normally you would have to like launch the application, find which VM you want, and then say that you want to connect to it. And wait, now it's, it's all done automatically for you. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the power of pretty voice impressive. I, I love that one. I love the way that one shows. Let's try this one. Skype, get Nick Landry on video. Starting Skype. Actually, let's not go through that one, just in the interest of time. But yeah. you can see that the Skype right. experience is starting. Yeah, she says, all right, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll kill, kick out of that one. But you can see that the Skype experience is starting, and instantly I'm going to have Nick on a, a video call, and um, that's just going to be one expression away from exactly what it is that you're trying to do. That's the whole goal. 
Now let's look at some, some apps that have a good in-app speech experience. So not just launching into the app, but actually inside of the app. So let's first of all go to um, the messaging app. And I will bring up my UI here. And you can see that when I'm recording a message in my chat app, I'm able to hit this familiar. Uh, Sorry, that command is not supported while in a call. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, I'm it's, still in a call. Let me go ahead and kill that. It's, oh, we like, actually. Yeah, it did connect the video over Skype here. That's okay, why. <laughs> we'll kill that. There we go. All right, we killed it. Well, that makes sense that I wouldn't be able to do that during a call. OK, so here I am in the chat, I mean, in the messaging experience, in the text messaging experience. And I can say, hey, Nick, what are you doing right now? Notice that default recognition experience popped up on the top of the screen. And it's gone ahead and translated what I've said and dropped it into that. So that's a, that's a good in-app recording experience. Um, I won't show you email, but you've got the same thing with email, yep. pretty much the ability to dictate an email. I talked to you about Audible. Let's just go ahead and start that using Cortana. Start Audible. Sure. Opening Audible. Audiobooks. Now, Audible gives me the opportunity to use this button-free mode. They say button-free, and they mean you, know, you can 